ओम विश्व दर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्यन्जातर्गत पश्यन्नात्म मयया बहिर्भूत यथा निद्रया यक्षात्कुते प्रबोधसम स्वात्मेवाद्वयम तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमकदम श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त बीजस्यांतरिवांकुरो जगदीद प्रांग निर्विकल्पं पुनः आया कल्पित देश काल कलना वैचिचित्रीकृत मयावीव विजृंभय महायोगी वयस्वेच्छया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहिद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहिद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त सहना सह नौ भुन सह वीकवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिषा वह ओं शाति 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 सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा वर्स ट्वेंटी एट अखंडकसम वस्तु सच्चिदानंदलक्षण इतिन्नचिंत सर्मध्यमो भवे सो इन दिस वर्सेस बिगिनिंग फ्रॉम द ट्वेंटी सेकेंड वर्स द ऑथर इज डीलिंग विद दिस टॉपिक ऑफ निरीध्यासन और वेदांतिक मेडिटेशन इन फॉर्म ऑफ ए सिक्स फोल्ड समाधि अभ्यास देर इज अ ब्रह्मा अभ्यास मीन्स ब्रह्मा अभ्यास इज वंडरफुल यू नी नॉट हैव टू सिट इन ए पॉस्चर ऑफ मेडिटेशन एक्सेट्रा एंड टेकिंग केयर ऑफ ए सर्टन प्रिलिमिनरी स्टेप्स एक्सेट्रा इट इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड बट वेल दिस इज अनदर फॉर्म ऑफ ए मेडिटेशन वेर यू नीड टू सिट इन ए सर्टन पॉस्चर ऑफ मेडिटेशन ट्रेडिशनल फॉर्म ऑफ मेडिटेशन and uh, taking care of preliminary steps etc and then uh, well dwell upon the teaching of what you have heard so of the six types of uh, samadhi there are three are internal and three are external and in this internal uh, samadhi the discipline practiced by the meditator is is a you know a separating the thought and the consciousness so thought consciousness there is a sakshi witness consciousness and there there is a mind the thoughts so that is basically that kind of that viveka and if the viveka is required because um, one is non separate from the other and if you don't know that you are basically witness consciousness mind is non separate from you if you don't know you take the mind as yourself that's a thing where you manifest that you take uh, that you take as yourself you manifest in the mind and uh, mind appears conscious so you take that as yourself well so that is basically and that is to be separated means it has to be understood through discriminative analysis and uh, so we ex- i mean this thought consciousness separation is practiced because every thought we experience internally is a it's a mixture of consciousness and a vritti so because of consciousness alone the thought is experienced thought itself is jadam it cannot reveal itself to you nothing in the world reveals itself to you you reveal the thing so, and therefore anyway so a thought cannot be experienced by itself so in the first stage while we take the thought and consciousness together and then shift our attention from the thought to the the revealer of the thought the consciousness part which we call as a drishya anuvidha savikalpa samadhi because you take help of thought therefore savikalpa samadhi drishya anuvidha here drishya means the thought thought is drishya for witness revealed so so drishya anuvidha savikalpa samadhi having shifted that attention to the consciousness then 
we dwell upon the various features of this consciousness. Each feature is basically remembered with the help of a Shastra Vakya. And uh, well, consciousness is Asangam. So, and uh, Nityam and Sarvavyapi, Sarvagatam, etc. Shuddham. See, these are connected words. Need not be you have to really think four features. Just take, uh, just visualize the Akasha which is all pervading and you will come across all the things. The Akasha which pervades everything, right? Akasha which pervades everything is Asangam automatically. That which pervades good, bad everything is free from the, this good, bad attributes of the thing which is pervaded. And therefore Akasha which is, which is basically Sarvagatam is Asangam also. And not only that, Akasha is Nityam also. Everything appears in the space and goes. Akasha is there all the time. I mean, just relatively. So Akasha is Nityam also. Akasha is Asangam also. And um, well, so uh, Akasha is pure, Shuddham, you can say. So these are the, these are, this is the way we have to understand. Same way consciousness is also basically, which is, which is Brahman. Ultimately, the Sakshi is Brahman, is all pervading, is also a Sangam. Consciousness pervades everything and so free from the attributes of everything and therefore consciousness is Nirguna. Consciousness is not related to anything which pervades in and, in and through everything is uh, basically not related to anything also because it cannot relate. It pervades consciousness, pervades in and through everything means basically other than that <laughs> everything is Mithya. How will it relate? Satya Vastu cannot relate to Mithya. How the, how the rope relates to the snake? It is not at all related. And therefore, uh, consciousness, you have to take, you pluck one feature. Well, that is from the words only. So consciousness is Brahman. Sakshi is Brahman, all pervading. What is all pervading in and through pervading? Well, is not connected to the name and form, which, per, which is pervaded, which, which is pervaded, Haya. And therefore, Asangam, Shuddham. So, well, forms have a, are good, bad, etc. There are, uh, I mean, good attributes, bad attributes, so called. Well, consciousness which pervades in and through is basically free from these good, bad attributes, etc. So, Shuddham. And well, consciousness which pervades in and through everything, well, is alone is Satyam. Because the form, etc., which are non separate from that. Well, is, is basically they are mithya. So anyway, point is uh, um, this is the way you take one feature and then other features will automatically come along with. Here, of course, in with respect to thoughts you are doing, then you can do with the thoughts also. Good, bad thoughts, etc. are not connected. I am not connected to the good, bad thoughts, etc. They are non-separate from me. Well, thoughts come and thoughts go. Well, I am all the time there, Sakshi. So this is how shifting uh, the attention to consciousness from the thought is drishya anuviddham and then dwelling on the features of the consciousness with the help of these words, Upanishadic words, words of the teaching is shabda anuviddham, savikalpaka samadhi. Because you are in both, you are taking the help of either a thought or the words. Therefore, the vikalpa is still there. So... Vikalpa of subject object is still there. And so it is called Shabda Anuviddham. And uh, I mean, uh, if you take help of a words, because Shabda he uh, and uh, Val, so since we, uh, so these are Savikalpaka Samadhi anyway. And this is Antara Samadhi, internal meditation. Because we are segregating the thoughts and consciousness. And uh, since thoughts are available only internally, it is Antara Samadhi. Then the author well, talked about the culmination of Samadhi Abhyasa. It is nothing but the absorption in, the, in that thought without requiring our conscious effort. So, because the thought continues in now in a subconscious mind. That state is called Nirvikalpakavastha because the conscious mind is non-operational. Mind should be there. Mind is there but the con mind is not so active. So, to generate the thoughts in there. 
therefore that is that is basically samadhi when the mind itself resolves into and goes to the causal state it is a sushupti so when mind is there but uh, it is not so active not generating conscious thought or well say conscious mind is mind which is not conscious uh, i mean not generating the thought subject object thoughts basically when the mind is conscious it will have it generates it divides itself into two one is ahankara and one is avrutti that's what it is the conscious mind has a two amsha that's what we have seen also ahankruti hi antakarana rupini vida one is ahankara i thought that's a subject and then definitely idam vritti also will arise is subject object so basically when subject object division is very clear then well definitely it is a conscious mind we say and that is a called a waking state but here basically when you when you are taking help of a, a words and uh, take well uh, also when you are aware of the thoughts etc so when in that case uh, definitely objects are there and therefore it is savikalpa samadhi but then after some time well the culmination of this samadhi abhyasa basically is nothing but the absorption in that thought without requiring our conscious effort so since the thought continues in the subconscious mind that state is called nirvikalpa samadhi conscious mind is non operational subject object division is there subject object division is there but you don't feel the subject object division that's what it is <laughs> so that kind of a thing well in that state the ego or i is basically dormant because ego operation requires a conscious deliberate mind so internal uh, meditation well definitely leads to internal samadhi which is called antar nirvikalpa samadhi <clears throat> now after talking about this internal meditation author now comes to external meditation bahya samadhi that is also of three types so in internal meditation i am separating thought and consciousness whereas in external meditation i am separating an object and existence so in the internal meditation well it is thought and consciousness and in the external version it is object and the um existence its own version consciousness is existence basically and thought is always pertaining to the external object let us say take it that way so definitely outside it is um, existence inside it is consciousness consciousness alone is existence <laughs> consciousness alone is existence why because the consciousness is invariable thing throughout the life consciousness is a invariable factor in all the three states of experiences either a waking state either a dream state either a deep sleep state consciousness continues the witness consciousness continues whatever may be the state of the ahankara mind consciousness continues ahankara resolved is illumined by the consciousness ahankara shines uh, whether uh, ahankara functions uh, partially ahankara functions um, fully waking state pa- partially functioning uh, dream state all this is revealed by consciousness the ahankara shines in consciousness that's what our thought shines in consciousness so basically consciousness alone continues so be- therefore consciousness is an invariable factor ahankara and the world etc is a variable factor so therefore basically even time shines in consciousness and therefore consciousness is the only thing which is ever existent therefore it is called sat and therefore consciousness alone is an existence Cons- and the existence is consciousness but anyway externally you cannot uh, meditate on consciousness what you objectify is uh, basically is a non self and it is not a conscious you cannot objectify consciousness you can be maximum objectify the mind of a person body of the person etc or you can appreciate the same consciousness as existence outside and that the way consciousness is indivisible no some consciousness has a division suppose that let's say you may be you knowing all these things consciousness is um has a division how will you know if consciousness has a division it should be an object of your knowledge then only you can say it has a division if it is an object of knowledge it is not a consciousness so consciousness is not available for objectification and therefore consciousness has no division also consciousness is one without second which is akhandam 
indivisible same way existence also is indivisible same way so existence also is indivisible so well take you can take an example of a two objects like let like, uh, take example of two clips internally there is thick clip thought and uh, that clip thought is illumined by consciousness and that illumined by conscious basically what clip clip thought does one function clip thought borrows consciousness from sakshi and then borrowing that consciousness by the clip thought is nothing but chidabhasa that's what it is that is chidabhasa so clip thought has now chidabhasa we can say and therefore it becomes clip gnanam clip perception etc clip cognition you can say anyway so inside it is clip thought and consciousness of course whereas externally it is clip object present along with isness or existence so here also um, like uh, in antara samadhi here also my first attempt is shifting the attention from the uh, clip to the existence inside i was shifting from thought to the consciousness because in the thought is non separate from consciousness you need not have any to do anything you just visualize a thought while it is illumined and therefore you now shift your attention from the thought to the illuminator of the thought sakshi etc same way here take an object and from object well you shift your attention to the existence that object is non separate from existence <laughs> naturally so when you say clip means clip is so existence is very much there so from clip you shift your attention to the existence which we call drashya anuviddha bahya savikalpa samadhi and this shifting is uh, so called because for this shift i am making use of an object as a stepping stone once the attention is shifted to existence from the object then i dwell upon that existence by seeing various features of the existence to dwell upon the various uh, features while well, you use uh, shastra words shastra words are used for dwelling upon the existence so it is called shabda anuvidya savikalpa samadhi you can say now what you apply to the consciousness you apply to directly without without worry this sat is akhandam sat existence is akhandam <laughs> right chit i was saying as akhandam chit i was saying as a brahman sarvavyapi chit i was saying as a sangam chit i was saying as a nityam same you can start but swami ji for sat i don't find you need not because sat chit alone is sat and therefore you have start applying and you will find it is there sat is akhandam sat is indivisible how can you say sat is indivisible take one clip and the other clip clip is and the, this clip of is while you find the existence is per, pervading this particular form existence is pervading this form and therefore well definitely uh, the existence also is divisible forms are divisible limited while well, clear the existence also is divisible clip is clip is are in between also is <laughs> and therefore space is and therefore definitely any form cannot divide existence in fact form appears in existence and resolves in existence right so basically existence is indivisible you can say akhandam existence is indivisible form cannot th- threaten the existence right form cannot threaten form appears in, uh, in the way inside you are doing what thought appears in consciousness rises in consciousness that's what we said in panchadashi when thought rises the chidabhasa rises etc anyway but we, point is so thought rises well the consciousness rises as a form of chidabhasa so and thought resolves in consciousness before thought consciousness was there where the thought is consciousness is thought resolves consciousness is consciousness is akhandam thought arises in that consciousness is nityam you can say even thoughts are variable consciousness is invariable etc etc even the thought concept of time arises in consciousness that is in form of thought <laughs> yeah so therefore everything arises in consciousness resolves in consciousness before a thought arises consciousness was now the when the thought is consciousness is thought resolves consciousness is same way here 
form arises in existence form resolves in existence and therefore existence ever is is indivisible form cannot divide existence because in between the two forms also there is a existence so the, the clip is clip is but in between space is anyway so basically isness cannot be divided so same things you can take because ultimately there are no two features of a there are two features of the consciousness one is existence one is conscious no 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 consciousness is existence consciousness is ever existent consciousness is a being only being in the world is consciousness therefore there is no other being no nothing has a beingness existence so this is a way to uh, take it so some people say well shabda uh, with the savikalpak samadhi for existence i am searching for the words features in the shastra for existence <laughs> same thing akhandam nityam and sarva happy existence is pervading everything including space space wherever the space is consci consciousness existence is because you say space is the very so existence pervades space existence pervades whatever is there in the space everything existence is indivisible sarva vyapi sarva gatam nityam everything is same thing you can apply for that so difference between present previous and the present well present previous means this uh, drishya anuvidda and shabda anuvidda uh, bahya savikalpa samadhi is that the previous one uh, well um, uh, i mean here it was in form of a you 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 focus on the form and then goes to the existence that is drishya anuvidda bahya savikalpa samadhi and then features of the existence now you uh, you you concentrate upon you meditate upon sorry while that becomes a shabda anuvidda bahya savikalpa samadhi that's how it is and so this is how sat is chit chit is sat and therefore nothing to worry but outside you cannot say ha consciousness is indivisible like doing this by objectifying consciousness and then thinking of the consci various features of the consciousness externally is not possible because that's the only thing not available for objectification everything is available for objectification to the consciousness consciousness is not available to the objectification everything that's how i said everything is evident to the consciousness consciousness is self evident it doesn't require to be objectified by any pramana and that is how it is self evident self evident self shining you can say anyway everything is other than consciousness is jadam and jadam definitely is not self evident it cannot reveal itself therefore it is to be revealed by the consciousness therefore that is jadam that is anutram consciousness alone is satyam kalam etc also is jadam kalam also shines through consciousness when you say time time consciousness but of course anyway so this is how um, even bahya savikalpaka samadhi also can be done drishyam and shabda anuvidham verse 29 stabdhi bhavo rasa svadat tritiya purva manmatah etair samadhi vishadbihi nayet kalam nirantaram so what is this nirvikalpa samadhi now bakya nirvikalpa samadhi anyway, there is so when the conscious mind deliberately entertains this say thought flow regarding existence and also sees the i, I mean uh, also sees the identity with the existence as you can very well say i am existence instead of saying i am consciousness you can say very i am existence because samadhi is means absorption absorption means mind of course pertaining to the external uh, thing but ultimately it is in the mind and therefore while you now claim i am an existence i am sat so if you identify with the existence pervading um, um, the external world now seeing uh, i mean visualizing existence as the as the very truth in the entire creation in pervading all the forms etc well then uh, your subconscious mind ultimately this was through conscious mind 
ಸವಿಕಲ್ಪ ಸಮಾಧಿ ದೃಶ್ಯ ಶಬ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಬ್ದ ಅನುವಿದ್ದ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಸಿಬಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಪರ್ವೇಡಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ವೇಡಿಂಗ್ ಇವನ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದೆನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ದೆನ್ ದ ಸಬ್ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಟೈನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಟೈನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಕಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡೂ ದಿಸ್ and therefore and after that the conscious uh, effort or the will of the meditator is not required this happens uh, this kind of thing happens even in a pertaining not to good thoughts even into the bad thoughts also especially a thought of a worry most of the people gets absorbed in worry you can see even from the face the other people can say his eyes are open and staring a particular thing but they are not really seeing the things ah that is an state of absorption absorption samadhi in worry they start con- consciously in fact to be honest with you there is no negative thought reaction including the worry arises with a conscious effort never never arises it just starts without your will and the person is totally absorbed in that also within no time gets absorbed because if, if anything without will comes especially all the reactions etc comes without come without the will or effort on the part of the person and therefore it when it starts uh, automatically then the person gets absorbed also the one who worries and the object of worry become one really speaking the person has no has no this kind of he is not conscious that i am really right now worrying only somebody comes and tells what are you doing what are you seeing then he comes out and then he basically recollects that he was worrying if you recollect at the time of worrying you don't know afterwards you recollect that shows a samadhi recollection comes later you are not conscious at the time of worrying uh, i mean absorb getting absorbed in the worry well that subject object division is not there even in the worry that's so why it it can it, you know, especially other things I, i i can't say like that but worry is something which person just gets merged into within no time he gets merged into he even forgets that he is worrying also means subject object division is not there very very nice example given by the here acharya so uh, here this also well if you if you consciously think while well, consciously meditate on drishya no vidya savik asavikalpa samadhi or shabda no vidya well definitely basically shabda no vidya later drishya no vidya beginning drishna drishna vidya you are consciously seeing a form and like appreciating existence seeing a form appreciating existence and now you switch over to the words related to the existence by in the shastra and so same words akhandam nityam etc sarva sarvagatam all these words now you uh, and the meaning of that you see pertain to the existence and then you get absorbed into that when you get absorbed into that well you your will effort etc is not required so at a subconscious level the thought continue if conscious at a conscious level if anything continues means you are aware of what you are meditating upon and you are a meditator that awareness also is there but that that is not there and therefore at subconscious level it continues this is called samadhi so um this subject of a division is not absent however but to fill the division you require a conscious mind so naturally the thought that is happening in the subconscious mind is we call it as a sukshma vritti we are not aware of that vritti when it is happening and they give another example of a sleep also that in sleep also there is a nirvikalpa uh, state where in which subject of a division is not felt but still the vrittis are there and so what is the vritti agnana vritti is there naturally because you agnana is a vishaya of the vritti we are i am not experiencing anything that experience is there very much and so are i am experiencing blankness i am experiencing ignorance 
etc. That these vrittis are, of course, very subtle because they are mind has resolved. The conscious mind has definitely resolved in a deep sleep state. And therefore, where it resolved in that causal state, these are the vritti. So we can call it as a vidya vritti. We can call it as a nidra vritti, etc. We can call it as a uh, karana sharira vritti. Anyway, so basically, um, I mean, how does then we know that vritti is basically present in sleep? Because after waking up, I am able to recollect that I did not have any experience with the sleep. So absence of any particular experience is an experience in a deep sleep state. And therefore, well, that is registered in the subconscious mind. Any experience definitely presupposes a vritti. So in a deep sleep state also, if there is a vritti, but I am not conscious of, so it is a subtle vritti. We, here it is a avidya vritti because causal body is much subtler than even the subtle body because it's a cause. And therefore, causal body, uh, the vritti arises in the causal body. Naturally experiencing in causal body, that is ignorance. And therefore, um, and that you can even, find whether causal body is there or not, somebody asks. Well, you, you just start thinking like this. In here, right now, like I am conscious of the world, I am conscious of the body, I am conscious of the, I am conscious of the mind, I am conscious of the emotion, I am conscious of my memory, I am conscious of the pranas, I am conscious of hunger, I am conscious of thirst, I am conscious of my knowledge, I am conscious, like that you continue, right? Then after you say I am conscious of this everything, now you are conscious of what? I am conscious of nothing. You have to say. You, you Ultimately, everything goes back to, I mean, resolves to the blankness. Ultimately comes blankness. That is what Karana Sharira is. That is what Karana Sharira is. Whole thing resolves at the time of deep sleep. Where? Blankness. So that blankness you can experience. This is resolved into this. This is resolved into this. Ultimately, you are conscious of what? Oh, I am conscious of nothing. Or I am conscious of blankness now. Well, that's Karana Sharira. If you want to say. That is what Karana Sharira is. It's a manifest. Everything will be there, but will not be available for your perception. That's a Karana. <coughs> Everything will be, the part will be there in the clay, in unmanifest, but it will not be available for experience. The whole bird will be there in an egg, but will not be able for a perception. The whole tree will be there in a seed, but not available for perception. So basically, karana is something which is where everything resolves and not available for your perception. That's what it is. And therefore people will ask the about a Karana Sharira. So I said this is how you can do. You The whole gross body is available for a objectification by you. You are conscious of your body. That's an object etc. And the senses and the mind and your emotions and your memory, your knowledge, your hunger, thirst, all are available for objectification. You can say, I am conscious of, I am conscious of, I am conscious of. Now what? After you become conscious of a gross body, subtle body, now you are conscious of what? Nothing, Swamiji. You are conscious of nothing. Blank. <laughs> Blank. That is Karana Sharia. Okay? That is where the in a, in a deep sleep state everything resolves. Everything is under the blanket of uh, blankness. <laughs> A blanket of blankness, blanket of ignorance. Yeah, like uh, like all the objects are there in a because why you are discussing Karana Sharira? Because Karana Sharira is a something. Let me tell you very frankly, Karana regarding Karana Sharira, maximum doubts are there. Even in the Vedantins who are studying since several years, several years. Believe me. In satsanga, I invariably get a question of a Karana Sharira. The people who are very senior. But Swamiji, why it should why it is like that? Because Karana Sharira is like that. Therefore, oh, Karana Sharira, because you you are it's not available for your um, objectification. For, because it's not manifest. 
anything which is not manifest in unmanifest condition it there will be a question always what is there what is there inside will be always there <laughs> anything which is unmanifest is subject to the great doubts so in a tree <laughs> In the seed also, the whole tree is there, not available. So I was giving you an example of a, you know, a dark room. All the objects are there. Sofa is there. This is there. That is there. Not uh, the the room is empty, but not available for perception under the blank blankness under the blanket of uh, darkness. Not available. Exactly this happens in a deep sleep state. Everything is there. Subject, object, both are there. Not available for your perception. You won't feel. Same thing happens in Samadhi also. Subject, object, division is there, but resolves. So you won't feel because of your absorption into the object. Once you are absorbed into the object, that subject, object, division will not remain. So this is a subconscious mind while basically this this um, thoughts continue pertaining to the self etc anyway so as in the case of a uh, i mean only difference in i told you also i just am reminding you so in a in, like in a deep sleep state well as i said you have a vritti in a in a in a karana sharira vritti that is avidya vritti here in a samadhi there is a vritti Subtle vritti, but it is not a vidya vritti because mind has not resolved into its causal state. Therefore, it is not a vidya vritti or karana sharir vritti. Mind is very much there, but its subconscious mind, we can say here, a sukshma vritti, that is a vidya vritti here, gnana vritti, that continues. But you are not able to appreciate it at that time. When you come out of samadhi, while well, you appreciate that this I enjoyed. I am like this, I, 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 I could see there that I am like this, I am like this, I am like this, etc. etc. So this is the thing. The way you recollect, once you come out of a sushupti, you recollect everything that you experience blankness, you experience happiness, etc. in a deep sleep state. Means you had an experience of a blankness, you had an experience of a happiness, re reveals that there was a vritti. Experience cannot take place without vritti. But that is causal vritti, causal body vritti or avidya vritti, let us say. So, that vritti was there, therefore experience takes place, and, but you are not able, you are not, con we are not conscious of. Only you will be able to recollect when you wake up, when you become conscious of. Same way here, when you come out of a samadhi, you will appreciate that you really saw yourself as a khandam, etc., etc. So, Nirukal Samadhi is a state of absorption in which this Vedantic thought continues in a subtle form. That's how we call Vidyavritti, naturally. As in internal med meditation, in the external meditation also, the culmination is the Nirvikalpa Samadhi. After two Savikalpa Samadhi. First is a Drishya. Second is a Shabda Nuvidya. And then the Shabda Nuvidya alone results into Nirvikalpa Samadhi. It is not, we'll see that. That are two, three points regarding Nirvikalpa Samadhi. We'll see. We'll, I will clarify at the end that it is not a, it is not a will based. Nirvikalpa Samadhi cannot take place with a will. It's just a culmination of a Savikalpa only. And uh, as I, uh, we discussed also that mind has a capacity to get absorbed into uh, into anything, I mean, any object where subject object division gets resolved. The division is there, but you won't feel when you the mind gets absorbed into that. So, that natural absorption of the mind basically of this I am existence which is indivisible, etc., takes place because of the enjoyment of this Vedantic meditation. So, now here, Rasaswada. And um, Stabdi Bhavaha. Stabdi Bhavaha Rasaswada Trutiya Purvaman Mataha. Trutiya means this Nirvikalpa Samadhi. So, uh, like uh, previous, uh, when you start meditating and if you practice for some time, you start enjoying even Savikalpa Samadhi also. You enjoy. 
and due to that enjoyment only person continues yeah if you don't enjoy even a sabikalpa samadhi you will not continue but you start enjoying and uh, well in that case later also trutiya means the nirvikalpa samadhi which automatically takes place mind gets absorbed then definitely ananda will be there so here it says uh, i mean the words rasa swada and sabdi bhava they are used here actually these two words are uh, in some other context they are to- have a totally different uh, connotation negative connotation and that is in the mandukya karika so when in well in mandukya karika when the godapada acharya ji talked about he also he used the words kashaya for sabdi bhava and he has used word rasaha also na na swadam rasayet tatra etc etc he said in karika so that he said rasa swada means experiencing the ananda in meditation is given it be, it is an obstacle to the meditation in this verse author says here the absorption is caused because of the enjoyment of the ananda ananda is a cause for nirvikalpa samadhi you get absorbed mind gets absorbed into something where the mind finds a joy that's how people get absorbed in reading also people get absorbed they have no awareness of time place or even they are the readers and right now they are reading that awareness also goes away. only the subject matter sherlock holmes remains <laughs> so so especially detective stories are something which really uh, i mean you get absorbed into that because so you are getting joy so ananda is a cause of a nirvikalp samadhi getting absorbed that is said here now which one is correct there it is said don't don't uh, i mean uh, i'm this experiencing ananda in the meditation when it comes then well that's an obstacle so don't then hang over there go ahead godapadacharya ji says so rasaswada there it is a obstacle ye rasaswada is basically a cause for the nirvikalp samadhi so that is that's a different so anyway what rasa has a two different meaning so ananda is divided into two raso vaisah rasagya khevayan labdhanandi bhavati sah rasa swarupah ananda swarupah that is atma is ananda swarupah rasa swarupah that is one meaning and rasa comes from the vishaya also rasa comes from vishaya vishaya rasa so that is a pratibimba ananda that is a pratibimba because there is a what happens is actually <laughs> what happens you had a desire of an object sense object and you got that sense object as you got the sense object well the desire dropped the desire dropped that vritti is a shanta vritti yeah that was a vikshepa desire was a vikshepa so that desire got fulfilled so your mind has a vritti which is shanta vritti in that shanta vritti this atma alone gets reflected nicely and so yeah, that is a vrittistha ananda so sense objects give pleasure means it is a vrittistha ananda this is temporary of course but anyway that's a pratibimba ananda you can say reflected ananda in the vritti and which vritti which vritti that shanta vritti yeah that shanta vritti with that clear reflection of an um, atma or ananda is called sukha vritti also sukha kar vritti so we should remember this sukha kar vritti anyway we which we call as a experiential ananda also <coughs> ananda through the experience of sense objects and uh, that happens only as i said you in the as a result of the quietude in the meditation as i showed tashanta vritti even it, this is really you know when you even uh, when you experience an a desired object but suppose your mind doesn't have that cannot generate the shanta vritti has some kind of a vikshepa you won't get ananda you won't get ananda and therefore basically experiential ananda and sarupa ananda of course both for that we can use the word rasa rasa means ananda so 
when Gaudapada Chayaraji refers to Rasaswada as an experiential Ananda, so there it is definitely experience of a meditation, which itself generates a Shanta Vritti. And uh, definitely, um, definitely then there is a Pratimi Mananda in the Vritti. Because the reflection will be clear when there is a Vritti is a Shanta. Clear. And so therefore, um, you experience Ananda there. That experiential ananda is an obstacle. So he says, Rasa, Naswadam Rasayet Tatra, he said. Tatra, in that meditation, you should not basically aswadayet, well, enjoy. Aswadayet means you should not enjoy that ananda. With Pratimimba ananda, experiential ananda, experience of meditation itself gives you joy. This is This happens for many, many things. Some people say when uh, Swamiji, I was doing Vishnu Sasanam, I enjoyed. Some people say when I was doing Puja, I just enjoyed. After Puja is over, they say, I enjoyed the Puja. See, this is all experiential Ananda. We should remember this. So you do something um, relating to Ishwara, you may enjoy. Like you, some people enjoy Japa. So, some people enjoy Japa. Doing Japa itself gives you Ananda. We feel, well, this is this Ananda, which you exp- because it goes away. It goes, goes up. When you get up, it goes up. Please understand this. Rasa is very... So anyway, so this all experiential ananda and one that becomes an obstacle. That becomes an obstacle because your mind gets stuck into that. Mind gets absorbed into that. No. You should go ahead. Basically, japa also we do for the sake of uh, to appreciate what is there in the gap between the two, um, uh, two successive um, japa thoughts. Right? And therefore, but anyway, point is, so there it is an obstacle in Mandukya. But here, well, we are doing Niridhyasanam, Samadhi Abhyasa Niridhyasanam, and we have taken help of a Drasya Anuvidda and Shabda Anuvidda. And so now thoughts are absorbed in the self, which is like Akhandam, etc., etc. So here that Ananda comes is a Ananda of the self, and therefore Swarupan. And therefore, it says here it is a welcome thing. Where so you exactly like Sushupti, there you enjoy, right? In Sushupti you enjoy, but as you when you come out, then you will appreciate or you recollect that experience. Same way when you come out of samadhi, you will appreciate that I am a Ananda Sarupa, which I definitely experience in the samadhi because there is here there is nothing else. Samadhi absorption in the Thoughts pertaining to the self occurs only after doing a, a, a Savikalpaka Samadhi, Drashya and Shabda, for some time, right? And therefore, here you will not say, well, I have experienced Ananda. You will say, I am Ananda. Therefore, here Rasaswada, he is a, in Nirvikalpaka Samadhi, he is a welcome thing. There Rasaswada in his in a Manduke Karika and Vedanta, uh, uh, I mean, in Manduke Karika, it is basically a, a obstacle. <clears throat> and then words Tabdi Bhava is there. And its synonym is a Kashaya, basically. Kashaya is uh, Vedanta Sara and Manduke Karika, well, basically, they use this word Kashaya, which is an obstacle to the meditation. And here it is called Tabdi Bhava. And that Stabdi Bhava is a favorable for meditation. There Stabdi Bhava or Kashaya, they call there in Vedanta Sara and Manduke Karika, that is a obstacle. So Stabdi Bhava in, in or Kashaya in Vedanta Sara and uh, Manduke Karika is, is to indicate the stunning or the immobilization of the mind because of the impurities in subconscious mind. That's actually a, it's a Tamoguna. Tamo, when Tamoguna manifest. Well, it, the mind is not able to think anything. A mind as though becomes like a jada. <laughs> Tavoguna represents jadyam, inertness. So the mind is basically conscious, right? And But it as though become like a stone kind of thing. It doesn't think at all. Jadyam is, uh, is, is, is uh, as though manifest. Inertness, inertia, inertia. So that's the bhava. Kashaya, they call there, he says, he says basically it is it's an obstacle. No Vedantic meditation is without thoughts. 
That is where we differ from yogis. Yogi chitta vritti nirodha. Make the mind inert. Stone. <laughs> we basically, we don't say that. In our nirvikal samadhi also thoughts are there, but of course we are not conscious of. Thoughts pertaining to the self, they are there. Anyway, my point is, so this kashaya there, it's of course a sabdi bhava, is a, is a, is a impurity. Actually, it's an obstacle. I mean, you, this, um, due to that, well, you, you have an inability to concentrate in Vedantic meditation. And in that state, well, there is no Atma Karvati, naturally. Mind is stunned. So this state is uh, pointed out as an obstacle for meditation in Vedanta Sara or Mandukya Karika. Here, Stabdiva means absorption of the mind. There it is immobilization of the mind. Ah. So immobilization is it is not able to think. Well, then it is obstacle. Here, Stabdiva means an absorption of the mind in the Vedantic thoughts alone. Without, I mean, while remaining immobilized or not getting distracted in other worldly thoughts. It remains only in the thoughts pertaining to the self. Then it is welcomed. So here, Stabdi Bhava is a welcome thing. There, Stabdi Bhava is not, mind was not able to move at all, not able to even think or regarding Atma at all. Well, then it is, it's an obstacle. Then it is not told Stabdi Bhava, then it is told Kashaya. Anyway, with this verse, verse, author concludes a description of this six-fold samadhi. And samadhi abhyasa, nidhyasana, six-fold. And um, three internal, three external. What is three internal? Drashya anuviddha savikalpa antar samadhi. Shabda anuviddha antara savikalpa samadhi. And Antar Nirvikalpak Samadhi. And here now, Drashya Anuviddha Bakya Savikalpak Samadhi. Shabda Anuviddha Bakya Savikalpak Samadhi. And Bakya Nirvikalpak Samadhi. Etc. So basically, six Samadhis have been discussed here between, it has started from verse 22nd onwards. For what it started? Well, it is started for something else. Yeah. To the extent that perhaps one need not do if one has something. One need not do all this. But if it is not there, then you do this in order to make effective that. What is this and that? We will discuss. So author advises basically uh, that one should be engaged in Samadhi Abhyasa continuously until it becomes a Sahaja, meaning that this Vedantic thought should be there. That's what I say Brahma Abhyasa is the thing. Brahma Abhyasa alone is the thing. Why, 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 why you have a partiality for Brahma Abhyasa? Because tat chintanam, tat kathanam, anyo anyam, tat prabodhanam. Ah. This, you know, this samadhi requires to sit in a traditional form of meditation. Means it is a time. It is. It is a. It is. It is limited in at a particular time. You have to do this. Whereas here uh, you need to do, ultimately to get abidance in the self, you have to constantly think, constantly. So even this samadhi abhyasa sixfold can, well, should become. Sahaja. Sahaja means well, all the time these Vedantic thoughts are there behind, in your mind and in your worldly transaction. Who is, who is this doing worldly transaction? Oh, Ahankara is doing worldly transaction. Yeah. Huh? Ahankara is doing. Ahankara is a, something which is, a, which is a function of the mind. Which is mind. Conscious mind. It is doing. All the three states first say this. All the three states pertaining to the mind. Sakshi has no state. All the three states of experiences are are states of mind. Hmm. Fully active mind. And also, Ahankara also is there, we call Vikshva, where the Ahankara pervades uh, senses and the, whole, the gross body make it, making it sentient. It's a state of a mind. 
partially active mind, partially active ahankara, <laughs> and generating the internal world, etc., through the vasanas in the mind. That's what the partial activity of the mind is. Partial activity of the mind means it generates from chittam, from its own own uh, storage. Some vasanas manifest, depending upon karma, of course, and generate the internal world and experience. <laughs> That's also mind. All subject object is mind. Then mind resolves, becomes inactive, goes to the causal state. That's a sushupti. That's a vahankara is totally inactive. So that state of experience called deep sleep state also is a mind. Sakshi has nothing to do with Dhavastha. Sakshi has nothing to do with the with the waking state, dream state, or a deep sleep state. Totally unconnected. Why unconnected? Connected to the mind. We have already seen the mind and consciousness, the sakshi. What is the relationship? We have already seen. That relation, Bhranti Jam, Bhranti, I am connected to the mind is a Bhranti. Consciousness is not connected, Asangam. Everything is, which is an object of consciousness is Mithya. And therefore mind is Mithya. So I have no states of experiences. Sakshi has nothing to do. Only thing is Sakshi being self-shining. While everything gets illumined in the, its presence, everything becomes conscious and experiencing external world or internal world, etc. Ahankara becomes a conscious entity. Ahankara rises and, and uh, resolves. The waker goes away and resolves and the dreamer comes and resolves in Kasakshi. The deep sleeper arises and resolves in Sakshi. I am the one who has nothing to do with this three avastha. I am avasthatraya vilakshana satchidananda atma. This is the thing. And therefore, in a waking state, while you are transacting, the transacting is a basically transactor, ahankara, the waker. And therefore, waker is just a my role you can say it say it is i am have nothing to do with this waker also but waker shines in my presence the waker exists in my presence and therefore waker has a various roles to play in a waking state and uh, i am the sakshi well self illuminating shakshi well in which the in presence of which the well this well waker does all functions and therefore, I am not a waker. I am not a father. Waker means that then you have to come ahead. Yeah. I am not a waker. That is not a criteria. Sahaja Samadhi is this. Sahaja Samadhi means you are constantly thinking. A diff you are constantly separating yourself, the witness consciousness and ahankara. That's it. The ultimate viveka is a viveka between ahankara and sakshi. Because you take yourself as ahankara, especially in a waking state. You take yourself as a waker first, that's a general, that's a bottom line. And then you say, I am a father, I am a mother, I am a this, I am that. And you literally think that you are a father. That's the reality of me. I'm a mother. You think that you are a mother. Or I'm a husband. I'm a son. And these, that. All are just roles. I am free from all the roles. They keep shifting their variable. That's how it is role. Role is something which is variable thing. Actor is not variable. Actor is invariable. And therefore, <laughs> one role goes, another role the role and the actor are always together. Where the role is, there the actor is. Where the beggar is, there the actor is. In fact, when the beggar speaks, actor speaks. When the beggar cries, actor cries. Understand that. No another actor which is connected and, you know, put with some glue. 
and well so at in front there is a beggar and in behind there is a actor ah be easy ah therefore the role arises here only but that is pertaining to ankara i am free from all the roles a is not b i am free from all the roles you have to if you continue in a waking state like this well definitely it is called sahaja samadhi you need not do all this all six fold they are meant for academic purpose okay academic purpose people were thinking oh, oh, oh when will i do all this nirvikalpa you have not to do nirvikalpa samadhi is a samadhi which is not to be done it's a it's an automatic yeah it's a it's 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 a result of your savikalpa that's it savikalpa you need a conscious mind a subject object division etc is there will is involved effort is there everything is there nirvikalpa is just an absorption in that state anyway so basically sahaja so and this vedantic thoughts are there behind you know all the time through all the worldly transactions anyway so this is this i mean um uh, this is what even bhagwan says in bhagavad gita pashyan shurnan sprashan jigran ashnan gachan swapan swasan pralapan unmishan nimishan right naiva kinchit karomi ti yukto manyet tatvit yukta i am the one who the one who is together manyet tatvit tatvit means who knows the truth manyet thinks i naiva kinchit karo oh but i am doing lot i am taking care of my children i am bringing them up who is doing who is doing consciousness is doing conscious being is doing in fact to be honest with you even we need not have to go to consciousness the conscious being is actor mother is doing one conscious being who is a basic person assumes the role of a mother and then assumes the role of a sister assumes the role of a daughter assumes the role of this one conscious being we go one step further the conscious being is nothing but basically consciousness limitless consciousness which is the only being etc etc anyway point is um this 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 kind of a constant thinking constantly negating the ahankara will give you an abundance into the self ahankara is the obstacle in your assimilation of knowledge and therefore if you are able to do this sahaja samadhi doing a viveka between ahankara and sakshi well then assimilation is very very easy you need not do all this but if you are not able to do this do this so that this that vedantic thought will remain in your mind constantly one or two points are there we'll discuss next time om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्ण पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य हो शाति 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 हरि ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम